when you know, say a miner gets a block reward, six point two five Bitcoin, and they are then taxed on the fair market value of that at the time of the block reward being transferred. Mm-hmm. So you pay business income tax on that. Is that yep? And then say the miner holds on to that for you know six months, then and that that asset appreciates, and therefore you have a gain. You're paying, uh, and then you dispose of it. You trade it or you sell it. Or, or something like that six months later, and then you pay on that gain. Mm-hmm. Is that how all commodities are treated? I mean, I feel like wheat can't be treated that way. Or like, oil, is oil and wheat, are other commodities treated that way? Um, no. And, um, and that's part of, I mean, not all commodities are treated that way. Are there and any commodities that are treated that way? I'm trying to think whether or not... There is a point where certain commodities become saleable, right? And you may you have to pay income on them sometimes if it's not sold anyway. Okay. Because saleable. Um, and so it's part of your inventory, and then it factors into some of that. So like um, if you were a gold miner and you kept some gold and you were past the point of sellable and the value of gold that gold appreciates a considerable amount you could potentially have yeah gains. so because it, it goes into your inventory right if you're in the business of you know selling gold then I'll, uh, at, at some point it may make it into your inventory and as part of your inventory there would be tax consequences along with that but um with mm-hmm. the staking i mean that is the argument that has been made um, and unfortunately, we don't have a decision on it. Um, this was the Jarrett case. Mm-hmm. It was a very small recall, refund yeah. suit. So um, I used to I used to work at the Department of Justice Tax Division. They were on the other side of this. So when you um, feel that the government owes you money, you sue them to get that money back. Mm. Um, and so what the Jarretts had done is they had paid the income tax on their staking rewards. Um, and then they sued the government for a refund of those staking rewards, saying that they uh, it should not have been um, taxable. Mm. And the argument there was similar to what you were saying. Essentially, they were saying, if we were a baker, um, you wouldn't tax us on the flour, sugar, and eggs. You, you, you wouldn't tax us on the cake even until we sold it, mm. right? Um, if, mm. if we were a farmer and we were growing apples, you don't tax us on the apples as they grow. You tax us when we sell it. Um, and they felt like that was this, how, how the staking reward should be treated as well. <coughs> Unfortunately for the Jarrett's, um, this only amounted to a few thousand dollars. Yeah, it's negligible. It was a negligible amount. And so they, which is fine, you can file that refund suit. And actually, it's a decent vehicle because a lot of people file in tax court as opposed to district court. Because um, in district court, you have to pay the money in first and sue to get it back. But in tax court, you don't have to pay anything. Mm. But the district court, I think, is a much more favorable venue for some of these issues because um, they just, right, they're not, some of these are not very tax heavy. They're pragmatic heavy and they're corporate heavy. Mm. Um, How is it that we want to tax this economic treatment? And I feel like the district court can sometimes be a better venue for making those economic treatment and corporate arguments. But in order to do that, you have to you have to ante up the money first. Um, but for the Jarrett's, that was only a couple of thousand dollars. The problem is, is that the Justice Department decided, for whatever reason, um, that it it wasn't going to um, contest it. They just they paid them all their money back. <laughs> yeah. Um, in in lieu of getting a decision. The Jarrett's objected and said, no, we want this decision because it's going to be an ongoing problem for us. Every single time we get these rewards, we're going to have this problem. We, we can't just keep suing for refund over and over and over right. and over again. But the court said no. Yeah. You know, it was mooted the minute the, they no longer had money to refund. So that they didn't have a standing to yeah. continue the case, right? But it, is, but it is a decision that I think needs to be made. When does someone truly have value? And is the cryptocurrency mining in any of its different varieties, is there a case where one should not be taxed until the ultimate sale? 
um, of that, right? And everything just kind of sits in inventory or if you're in a dealer of of cryptocurrency or you treat it some other way, I think we're going to see that. And that's, I feel like 2023 um, and 2024 are going to be big years for legislation and regulation in this space. Mm. Um, the, the government had to ignore it ignored it too long. 2021, we saw a huge adoption by individuals um, getting into the space, buying cryptocurrency and using it. Um, and then we saw a bunch of um, kind of fraudulent behavior in the space that caused the government to be concerned exactly for these individual consumers. So I think individual consumer legislation and regulation, we're going to start to see a whole lot more of that because there's going to be there's going to be inevitably um, some form of act that's going to be a you know digital asset consumer protection type bill mm-hmm. at the federal level um, to protect um, people, and it's going to impose things on the companies or people who deal in this space, and hopefully answer some of these questions so that individuals have a clearer idea yeah. of when they do and do not have taxable income. 